welcome again on the video lecture series on subject web designing subject code is kcs 052 and now we are on a sixth topic of unit one and the topic name is web standards and w3c recommendation from the name it is it is recognized that the web standards obviously for designing any kind of product or any kind of project not even in the computer science even if we talk about the civil and the mechanical they there are all definitely there is there will be a one standards so that all the developer or all the staffs who are maintaining the quality and who who actually prove maintaining the public accountability they need to they must have to follow a one standards so to overcome this particular problem or to minimize the gap the w3c recommends and they design some standards so in this during this uh, topic we'll talk about the popular or the common web, web standards as well as the w3c recommendation show that we must maintain the accountability and we must maintain the quality once we have uh, once we have built some projects or products so w3 stands for world wide web and the w3c is the consortium of design especially for the world wide web so it was designed actually the world the ww the world wide web has been arrived in 1989 by the Tim's Burnley and actually this consortium is is responsible under the under the ages of international standard organization so it was founded in 1994 it's mean after the uh, after the after the birth of www in 1989 they just gen they just designed the consortium for World Wide web in 1994 so now in this topic we will talk about the standards and recommendations so obviously uh, so the standards are the specific procedures and specific a specific method that must follow by the developers who is designing the product or project under the ages of w3c so if if your product if, if you are working or if you are making a one project and if this project follows or it matches the requirements of the international standard of organization so you need to must follow these standards so there are some common standards and you might be you heard about the XML and you might be heard about the CGI HTML is here which is uh, actually at observe it is a W3C standards once we have the JSON we have X, XLT right so the W3 standards are actually these are the published documents and the authors who are dis actually designing some product or the project they need to refer these uh, documents so that they can maintain the they min can maintain the quality and the fairness of the work as well as they can maintain the public accountability towards the public domain overall the these documents are actually the processes and these must be processed according to the w3c standard so if you follow these standards definitely you your product will be recognized under the international standard organization so to once you follow these processes they are the certain uh, features that you need to follow once you are following the w3 standard so the first is your the agreement so there should be a proper agreement or clear agreement between the developer and the client so if you are following the w3 standards so you need to so your agreement your the, the, the there should be the very clarity uh, under the the agreement you are signed with the developer or the client next is the fairness so you should be fair with the product or the with the with the standards you are using public accountability so there must be some standards let's suppose you will not be open the passwords or you will not share the passwords or the other in other informations with the other public or in the public domain the last one is the quality so you must maintain the quality standards so that so once you follow these four different kinds of features 
definitely you will following the w3 standards so there are the some common and standard w3c standards are given so one of them is the xml which is extensive markup language which is used to which is used to transfer the data from one point to another point or it can be used to generate a tree structured data cgi which is now very few of the persons are using these technology that is the common gateway interface now it is replaced by the sublets and jsps tom it is a doc it is a document object model and it is a programming api for html and xml documents it defines the logical structure of a document and the way a document is accessed and manipulated the at the fourth one we at the fourth one we have the json javascript object notation and it is a lightweight format for storing and for transporting a data from one server to or one one machine to the another machine and it is often used when data is sent from from a server to a web page so json is a self describing and easy to understand and fifth point we have the html hypertext markup language hypertext markup language is a standard markup language for document designing to be displayed on on a web browser it can be accessed by the technology such as cascading style sheet css and the scripting language such as the javascript and on sixth we have a simple object access protocol is a messaging protocol specification for exchanging the structured information in the implementation of web services in computer networks so it is used to exchange the standard specification exchanging the structured information from one machine to another machine then we have the x query which stands for the xml query and it is used it is a query and the functional programming language that queries and transform collections of structured and unstructured data usually in the form of xml text and with the vendor specific extensions for other data format like json and the binary so if you have a unstructured data or if you have a vendor specific let's, let's suppose if i'm using a different kind of database let's suppose i'm using the oracle so it is very helpful for converting the vendor specific data into the another vendor specific data so it first convert this data into the xml and then xml can again convert back to the with the help of this query to back to the vendor spec specific uh, data st structure then we have the wsdl stand for the web services description language and it is used to describe the web services and actually it is also written in the xml then at the last we have xlt which is extensible style sheet language it is an extension of the cascading style sheet it is styling language for xml and purely written for the xml only and similarly the w3c recommend some specifications so because these are the optional but it is required to copy the rules of the international standard of organization so these are the specification and these so these specifications are called the w3c recommendation this is the most mature stage of the development so once a particular standard has been matured and it's getting all the version on all the changes then it will be converted as the most matured development or the recommendation so at this point the standard has undergone extensive review and testing so obviously once any recommendation or any document has been designed so it first passes from in many numbers of reviews and the testing so once the different kinds of version has been launched and once it's it's it has been uh matured enough then it will be considered as a most mature w3c recommendation so uh, obviously once uh, we talk about the extensive review and testing obviously it must undergone through the theoretical and the practical condition so that it must be matured enough so these standards is now endorsed by the w3c because these are the recommendations they recommend for providing the quality and the other kinds of features once you are dealing with the client and servers oh sorry once you are dealing with the 
client and the developers. So it, it's indicating the readiness of the development to the public and encouraging more widespread support among implementations and authors and developers to generate new and new products.